Hi, I'm Ari, I'm the Oak Witch, and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you some tips on how to connect to nature in your craft. For a lot of witches, especially those who are more centred in a folk magic tradition, connecting with the land, your local earth, is something that is really important. Being in tune with the shape of the landscape and the seasonal rhythms is something which is really important to us. And it can be quite hard to stay connected to this, you know, just with the ongoings of everyday life, with school, work or college, relationships, obstacles, things that just come up in everyday life. So I wanted to share with you some really simple tips to help you strengthen that bond with nature. So the first tip is get a plant identifier app. Now I've said this before on my channel loads of times, so if you're regular you probably already have one, but it's more about how you use it. I've listed a whole bunch of different plant identifier apps in prior videos, so I won't go over those, but I'll put them down below in the video description so you can check them out. Get an app, get one that kind of suits you best and when you're outside, and I don't mean just for nature walks, I mean if you are just pop into the shops, if you're on your way to work or school, take a moment to stop, just for a second, if you don't have the time, just take one moment and take one picture of a plant, a weed, a something that you see. If you do have the time, obviously I recommend just taking a moment out of your day just to sit be with that plant to look at it don't necessarily touch it if you don't know what it is it could be toxic but if you're able to identify with your app look up some ecological information and just sit and be with the plant obviously if you can't stop to take a few seconds out of your walk and if you're in a rush just take a picture and then go about your day and then later on when you have some time use the app and try and find out what the plant is. And the idea here is to do some research. What is the plant's name? What are some folk names? How is it usually cultivated? Is it native to the area? If it's not native to the area, how did it get to your area? Is there any folklore or magical information present on this plant? The more you do this, the better you will know what your local lands flora and what plants flourish in your area and this is a part of building a relationship with your local land those who struggle with depression like myself it can be quite hard to motivate yourself to go out for a walk but when you do have that motivation when you do step outside take a moment to just take a picture or two of some plants that you see and this will go a really long way the second tip i have for you is similar to the first one but it's to get a bird sounds app now the bird sounds app that i use is called birdnet and i'll have that link down below as well and it's such a lovely app so again if you're ever outside or even if you're inside and have a window open use the app and take a second to just try and record the birds chirping and to see what the app identifies it as. With this app I'm now able to confidently identify house sparrows and magpies. I also now can distinguish blackbirds and crows. It's a really wonderful experience and now when I go on my walks and I don't have my music on I can actually hear the birds and I can visualize the magpie when you hear its cackle. It's really uh, a lovely experience and obviously this is getting to know your local land as wildlife is a part of the ecology of the land. I think this is really lovely as well because when you start to be able to identify these bird sounds then you're able to understand what birds frequently are abundant in your area and again this is tying to getting to know your local land and it's a really lovely thing to be able to just to hear birds bird sounds and bird chirping and be able to identify oh that's that species. My third tip is, is a slight indirect way of connecting to your local land but it's to read nature books. Nowadays there are so many nature writing books and I don't mean like ecological you know articles or conservation stuff I mean just generally nature writing. Just learning about nature is really wonderful and there are so many books now out there which are dedicated to helping you connect to nature to your local wildlife. A book I've recommended before on my channel is Rewilding Yourself by Simon Barnes. This is more UK focused so to anyone outside the UK might not be as great of a recommendation but this book was so lovely and actually 
go and experience nature and giving practical tips to help you do so. It's a really inspiring book so I recommend that one for anyone who's in the UK. If you're in the US I do really recommend Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. This is a really beautiful book. This book is really lovely as it's written by a Native American who talks about her experiences as such and being a botanist so there's a lot of intersection between ecology and Native American spirituality and it's a really important book I think if you do live in America and it's a perspective that you might not have had taught to you before so I do recommend that if you're interested but yeah just go to your Waterstones, Barnes & Noble, your local bookstore, go to the nature section and you'll see tons of nature fiction books, natural history and just general nature writing. Tip number four is a bit of a obvious one but I guess it's to have houseplants. Now I think a lot of people are put off for houseplants because a lot of us don't really know how to take care of them properly but there are many resources to help you learn. So if you search on YouTube or even on TikTok, there are so many videos and resources to help you learn how to take care of plants better. And there's even tips for what plants to get if you just completely like don't know how to take care of plants and plants that are essentially really hard to kill. Another really great experience is having your own herb plants and you can either grow these yourself from seed which is fairly easy to do or at least here in the supermarkets you can actually just get a full grown plant just already grown um, and you can just take care of those and obviously you can use those herbs in your magical practice. If you already have houseplants, do some research. Where are they native to? What ecosystems would they exist in? How have they been used in magic? And if you can't find any correspondences, I made a video all about how to build your own correspondences, which you can check out there, I think. <laughs> And tip number five is to have a land spirits altar. Now working with land spirits doesn't have to be this massive spirit conjuration hoo-ha, which is great, I'm not trying to degrade that, but I think spirit work can seem like a little bit of a scary word. Um, spirit work can just involve venerating or just worshipping, for lack of a better term, these spirits. Now before you get into spirit work I do think you need a solid base on protection magic, banishing, you know, cleansing, all those sort of basics, grounding and centering. It's good to have those basics down just in case. Those types of magic are always good to sort of have a base knowledge on before you step into more advanced and intermediate stuff. But spirit work, I think, as a practice, you know, when you're just giving offerings to spirits or venerating them. I think anybody can have that as a part of their practice. But yeah, so having a land spirits altar, one that is just dedicated to your local land spirits, I think is a really nice way to connect to nature. And I guess I can show you mine as an example. So just as a little insight into my current practice, here is my land spirits altar. I have a green man statue slash candle holder as this is, this is to me, this is my UPG, but he is the face of the land and hence he's closely related to land spirits in some form or another. So this is not something which I would say is fact about the green man, but this is just my experience of connecting to nature and nature spirits. So other than that, I have little votive offerings laid on the altar, which I've personally gathered from the land as representations of the spirits in which I'm venerating. I give weekly fresh water offerings, and I also give offerings in form of prayer. Now, a book I recommend for this is The Big Book of Pagan Prayer and Ritual by Siswa Serith. I'm probably pronouncing that horribly wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, but this is a really, really good book. I think it's really lovely in that it includes loads of different types of spells for different deities across cultures. And I think it's done in a really respectful way as well. There's a lot of prayers in here, um, but some of which don't just include deity names to specific deities, but to include different types of spirits, like nature spirits and stuff. So I think that's really lovely. But one prayer I love saying, which I will read, 
So this prayer is listed under the chapter Civic Prayers to Land Spirits and it reads Spirits of plants and animals, of water and stone, all the spirits of this land, our ancestors weren't kind to your ancestors when they came to this land. Today hear our words, taste our offerings, so we might begin a new relationship with you, a, a few small steps on the road to trust. There are so many different prayers now, it's just one example, but it was one that's really nice and I like borrowing and giving as an offering to these land spirits. And this in itself is a way to connect with your local land and especially even the act of going out and respectfully gathering some you know bits of nature just to put on the altar in itself is a nice way to bond with your local land. So yeah those are some five simple tips. I wanted to keep this video short and sweet so I hope that you enjoyed these tips. I hope that they have inspired you in some way. Connecting with nature in your craft doesn't have to be this huge massive endeavour where you're taking trips to large forests and performing rituals in the woods like it doesn't need to be that elaborate it can be as simple as just identifying plants on your way to work or having the bird sounds app recording chirping that you can hear outside your window it can be really as simple and as trivial as that and it's still a massively valid way of connecting to your local wildlife and something to add is connecting to your local land and building that relationship is something which is ongoing it's a slow progression in this journey so, so try not to feel disheartened if you don't feel connected to your local land on your first nature walk out these things take time for some people especially as some people have busier lives than others so yeah anyway i hope you enjoyed these tips and i'll see you in the next video bye